Lord God, we pray that you bless each and every one that's on his way, the, the one that's here already, Lord God. Yes, Lord. Lord God, we thank you for each and everything you've done, that you're doing, and you're going to do. Yes. Pray that you bless the bereaved this morning, Lord God. Yes. Bless the service, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you. We give you all the honor, glory, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
then his, his servant said unto him, Would it thou then let that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the terror, ye also uproot, ye, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest, and in the time of harvest I will say unto the reaper, Gather ye together first in terror, and bind them in bunches to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. May God have blessing to the region and hear every word. We have a hand by. Right now, 
Heal their sick bodies, oh God. Mend their broken hearts, oh God. Regulate their troubled minds this morning, oh God. For we know that you can do all things but fail this morning, oh God. And we call upon Dr. Jesus this morning, oh God. To just come and suck with us this morning, oh God. Oh God, if it ever been a time that we need you. We need you right here and right now this morning, oh God. Oh God, come in the time travelers this morning, oh God. Stir around in the building, oh God. Stir around in our hearts this morning, oh God. Have your way this morning, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh God, and we just ask, oh God, that you look down upon our children this morning, oh God. Touch them right now, oh God. Give them a church going mind this morning, oh God. Look down upon that young man and that young woman standing out on the corner this morning, oh God. Touch them right now, oh God. God have them pick up a bottle and put down a gun this morning, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Oh God, and we ask that you look down upon the victims of mass shooting this morning, oh God. Have your way, oh God. Touch them right now, oh God. Build them up where they've been torn down. In the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Look down upon this United States of America, oh God. Have your way this morning, oh God. Oh God, we need you right now, oh God. Oh God, come on in the room this morning, oh God. As we pray this morning, oh God. Oh God, we love you, we need you, and we can't get along without you. In Jesus' name, amen.
hands, his praises shall continue to be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. Humble shall hear the other and be glad. O oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. How honored we are to be here today uh, to carry out uh, one of the two ordinances of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, uh, baptism and the Lord's Supper. And we're grateful for this young man who made the decision that he wanted Christ to be his Savior. Yes. And we thank God that he is ready and he understands what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for him in bringing him out of darkness into the marvelous light. Upon the profession of this our young brother uh, in obedience unto the command of our Lord Jesus, we do baptize him in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.
Well, come on up here, Mr. Omar. That's one of those names that they've got from overseas.
Now I can hear a whole lot of folk say no, no, no. But can I tell you, in reality, we're telling him, you go head on and bear your cross. Because I can't take it. Oh, Lord, have mercy. But my brothers and my sisters, if I'm going to be the servant that God will have me to be, brother preachers, if you're going to be the servants that God will have you to be, brother deacons, choir members, ushers, secretaries, parishioners, and general, if you're going to be everything that God wants you to be, you're going to have to bear the cross. Yeah. I'm going to say it one more time. If you're going to be the servants that God will have for you to be, you must and should bear the cross. These verses give us in glad and detail this events surrounding the death of our Lord Jesus. We can read in the gospel account of the pain and agony that our Lord endured for us that night and day in which he suffered for the sins of humanity. Often we read this account and our hearts are stirred to think of what our Lord did for us on that momentous day over 2,000 years ago. Yet too often we read these words and we fail to catch the small details that make this event come alive for us. In this passage, one of those small details presents itself for us to look at here this morning. In verse 21 again, we read of a man named Simon the Cyrenian. He is mentioned here and also in Matthew's gospel and in Luke's gospel. He appears on the pages of our Bible, my friend, out of nowhere. And just as quickly as Simon the Cyrenian appears, he disappears. However, while we appear here and see here, it, it teaches us a valuable lesson about the love of God and about a man's love for the Savior. Yes. This man did for our Savior folk what even his closest disciples were unable to do. Y'all miss what I just said. It didn't say Peter, James, John, or Bartholomew, or none of the others came along to bear the cross, but it does say Simon the Serenian was the one. You remember it was Peter that said, Lord, I'm ready to go with you all the way, both into prison and to death. Yet, when the time came to follow Jesus unto death, Peter, like the rest of the disciples, they forsook him and fled. Yes, Lord have mercy. Yes, let's, let's here take a moment this morning and, and look into the account of Simon the Serenian and ask ourselves the question, must Jesus bear his cross on? That ought to hit home. Yes, oh, Lord. When they lie on you, what you want to do? When they put you down, what you want to do? They curse you, what you want to do? But yet you say, I'm going to bear my cross. Let's see the first thing here in this great text. We see our Savior condemned. All right, we see that. Look, folks, in verse 6. 26, rather, we see his crime. Now, according to this verse, Jesus was accused of claiming to be the king of the Jews. In reality, Jesus was going to the cross because it was part of the Father's plan. It was a part of the Father's plan for our Lord to go to the cross. In fact, in Revelation 13 and 8, he said before the foundation of the world, the Lamb was slain. Now, from a human standpoint, Jesus was condemned because he was godly and because he taught men the truth about worshiping and serving a true God. Can I tell you all something that you may not believe? Folk, and you can tell them all that I said, 
They do not want to see you live God. People do not want to see you live a godly life. They just don't believe you ought to live a godly life. They believe you ought to do a little here and a little there and everywhere. But my friend today, God called us to be godly, right? Amen. If you say he's your God, shouldn't you want to be doing the thing that God will have for us to do? Oh, my dear people, today, we as the church of the living God, we need to wake up and say, I don't care what others might do, but I'm going to do all I can, while I can, to live a godly life. And for God to love you for that. You really want to be loved by somebody? Lord, have mercy. Just live a godly life, and people don't want to run when you live a godly life. They don't want to be bothered. Do you bad company? Yeah. Y'all have mercy. Yeah. Man, because everybody has to do a little something. You know, yeah. if you don't dance, you will drink a little blood. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of light. <laughs> you gotta do something. You don't dance. Yeah. Oh God, have mercy. My friend, God wants a godly people. And Lord have mercy. Do we not only see our God's crime, rather, the crime they accuse him of, but we also see our Lord's condemnation. Now these verses tell us of how our Lord was abused by pious soldiers. Now among other things, look, folks, they scourged him. They spit upon him. They beat him with their hands, crown him with the crown of thorns. Do y'all know that? They clothed him in a scarlet robe. They mocked him and they beat him over the head with the reed. Yet Jesus endured all these things without uttering a word. See, some folk believe every time somebody do you something, you ought to do them something. Amen. But Jesus did not utter a word. Let us never forget uh, this morning that Jesus endured all that he did because he did not want you and I to go to hell. He endured the worst that man could do to him and he suffered it all because he loved us more than he loved his own life. Do we get that today? What a glorious demonstration of the love of God for sinners. In fact, Romans 5, 8 says, But God commended his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And in John 3, 16, all of us know by heart, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So we've seen his crime, his condemnation, and in verses 20 through 25, we see his crucifixion. Now, after they had abused our Lord, and after he had endured an entire night of brutal treatment, they led him away to be crucified. Our modern minds cannot comprehend the brutality of the death that Jesus endured for us. We get our word excruciating from the same word from which we get the word cross. It was a death so harsh and so terrible that it was reserved for the lowest of slaves. Y'all get me? The lowest of slaves were the one that had to endure crucifixion. But here the Lord Jesus Christ became just what we needed. Someone who could pay the price for us. Lord have mercy. In fact, the Bible, not the Bible, but secular history tells us that a Roman citizen could not be crucified. Except by direct decree of Caesar himself. He is the one that had to declare one, my friend, to be crucified. Therefore, we see that Jesus, a man who had expended his life in the service of others, a man who did no sin, a man who harmed no one, but helped all who came to him, my friend, was condemned to die the death of the vilest and the most hated slave. 
They hated him. Yes, and y'all, you know right now, the Bible said they hated him without a call. Yes. Do we get that? Yes. Now, if folk hate you, they can't say, well, he stole my bed. <laughs> he stole my wife. Huh? Or she stole my man. Or he stole my wife. Y'all know what I'm saying? So I have a right to hate them. Lord have mercy. Do I need to remind us how terrible or how horrible death was? Isaiah 52 and 14 tells us that his visage was so marred more than any man. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Now remember now, they put a crown of thorns on his head. Yes, sir. Y'all get what I'm saying? And do you suppose they just, just like the lady up there? No, man. No, sir. Don't you? They pressed him down. And you can imagine that thorn, secular history said, were made up of 72 thorns. And they pressed it upon his head. And you can imagine blood coming from every which way. Y'all hear what I'm saying? His visage or his vision was so hard, my friend, more than anybody. Lord have mercy. Imagine the agony of having nails driven through hands and feet. Imagine the torment of feeling nerve against iron. Imagine the agony as his body is wrapped with spasms that slam his lacerated back against the cross. Imagine the swelling of his head from the thorns that were driven into his head. Imagine him having to push against the nails in his feet while he pulled against the nails in his hand just to get a breath of air yes, to breathe. Lord Jesus, my friend, may we grab hold that Christ, hear this way, if you've never heard it before, hear it today, Jesus Christ suffered, I'm going to say it loud, Lord, for you. He suffered hell so we would not go to hell. That's loud, I think I've been talking. But I know the Lord don't mind me saying that one more time. Jesus Christ suffered hell so you and I would not go to hell. Now we go at all what he has done. You done a minute told me I don't appreciate nothing you did for me. Lord have mercy. Oh my friend, he paid it all. And that song said all to him I owe. His crucifixion. Oh, he was a man that did no sin. A man who harmed no one. But helped all who came to him, my friend, he was condemned to die the death of the vilest and again, the most hated one. He went through all of that. And do we not know, my friend, he went through all of these things again for you and for me. Imagine having again to be hanging on the cross. And knowing all what they were doing him, yet he just said, Father, forgive me. For they know not what they do. And can you also imagine him with that thief? They were two thieves, and but one of them cried out, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And the man that had blood pouring all over the place, he could tell him today, shall thou be with me? In paradise. Yes, the Lord's word. Imagine the thirst, friend. Imagine the shame of his nakedness. See, when we see pictures of Jesus by these poets, not poets, but by these artists, amen, they have him with a little rag kind of tied around, but he would make it. Oh! Naked as a jaybird. Naked. Naked, naked. Y'all just think that for a little while. And I'll give you a little chance to just think of this man. Hanging naked. So we could have some clothes on. The Bible tells us he was naked. If you read Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, where we'll see we also are compassed about 
with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth so easily beset us, and looking unto Jesus, the art and finish of our faith. Listen to it. Who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame. What shame? The shame of hanging naked. Lord have mercy. And you need folk don't have to be naked and want to be naked. Amen. Thanks be to God that he found us again. 
And then, folk, the word of the Lord tells us that they compel Simon to carry the Lord's cross. Now, this word means press into public service. It seemed that the Roman soldiers could enlist civilians to do certain tasks for them. People were required by Roman law to obey or they could be put to death. See, they no doubt would have killed Simon had not he bore the cross of Christ. Yeah. Oh, my dear brothers and sisters, just think about that if you will. But thanks God, the Bible mentions this man, Simon, and he was compelled. And that's why Jesus said, if they compel you to go one mile, go two. Uh -huh. Do y'all get that? That is the, the enemy. Lord have mercy, we don't think you can do. Amen. God will allow you to do. Amen. Look, I want you to go one mile, boy. Okay, master. I'll go two. Lord have mercy here. My friend, and then we see the Lord's shame. Now, perhaps one of the reasons the soldiers pressed Simon into this service was to cut up his king. You know, that still matters in this day, too. Huh? Do y'all understand what I'm saying? You see, it was considered the most degrading act imaginable to carry the cross of a condemned man. No soldier would want to do it. And the soldier probably would not have chosen anyone who was obviously Jewish to do the job. To have carried this cross would have branded that person and would have rendered them ceremonially unclean. The Passover. For Simon the Passover was over, was over the minuteness that he touched the Lord's cross. Hear me well. The word compelled carried with the idea of force. Perhaps it was the threat of death again for this African to pick up this cross and carry it. But regardless to the circumstances, folk, the moment Simon touched the cross, he was a marked man. What a picture. For those of us who claim to be Christians. Do you realize that the cross of Christ is still associated with shame? Huh? See, if you take your cross, you hear me? If you take your cross, it's associated with shame. Listen what the Bible said. Again, the Lord took his and he expects us to take out. Jesus said that one of the marks of his disciples was that they had a willingness and a desire to carry the cross. What does he say in Matthew 16 and 24? He said, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Now, this passage makes it clear that those who follow Jesus must be willing to deny themselves. Take up the cross Follow him now. Please note that the steps of Jesus led him to death before they led him to glory. The steps of Jesus carried him to death, my friend, before they led him to glory. The same may be true of you and for me today. For sure, bearing the cross will bring the reproach of the world. But a willingness to bear the cross behind the Lord will bring the smile of God. And you all remember the choirs used to sing, God has smiled on me. Yes. Well, I want y'all to help the choirs out and tell them, well, if God has smiled on you, it's because you've been carrying your cross. Yes. Lord, that person, preacher, how could you say that? Don't be saying God has smiled on me and you don't want to bear a cross. God can't smile on you. I don't hear nobody say it ain't bad like that. I'm going to say it one more time because I love it because God wants me to say it. Don't say God has smiled on me or God has smiled on you and you're not willing to carry a bad a cross. you got the bad cross for God to smile on you and for him to smile on me. Now please note that the step of Jesus led him where he went again. Just as a condemned criminal was forced to carry his cross to show the world that he was under and submissive to the rules he once rebelled against, so we born again believers must bear the cross of Christ. 
Christ. And again, that's self-denial. To show the world that we are submissive to the rule of the one, my friend, that formerly rebelled against us. All this may mean that we have to walk out of step with the world. Certainly would mean that we must be different from the world in our thinking, different from the world in our manner of life, in the forms of entertainment that we use, and how we conduct ourselves in our interpersonal relationships. Now, part of the shame of Christ is our learning to be like him instead of being like the world. I don't know about you, but I can say emphatically, dogmatically, that I have decided to make Jesus my choice. If there anyone else here today that can say that I have decided to make Jesus my choice, and after making him my choice, can we go forward and say, no turning back. No turning back. Amen. Because all that we need is before us. We don't need to go back. What was back then? If there's so much back there, why did the Lord bring you out of it? Is God pleased with everything that we do? Lord have mercy. Y'all hear me well. Could we invite Jesus to listen to our music? Why well, don't listen? Come on, Lord, listen to what I'm listening to. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Could Jesus, I mean, walk out right now. I'm talking about giving you a few minutes to change the chair. Could, could, on the stage. Could you walk outside and you turn the music on and say, Lord, how you like me? <laughs> Lord, have mercy on me. Oh, my friend, could we, could we, could we invite Jesus to watch TV with us? Uh, oh, Lord, have mercy. Oh, 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 boy, that preacher's getting tough that the day. Could we invite him along on a date? You know, if you're dating, could we invite Jesus to come along on a date? Lord, Lord, Lord. Oh, my friend. If we can't do these things, someone needs to change folk. And it isn't the Lord. Am I right? It's us. Now I'm close. Somebody said it's time for you to close that. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Oh, I'm glad God chose me to preach. I'm glad. Because he knew I wanted to do what he wanted me to do, not what I wanted to do. Oh, hear me, folks. The last time we see the message, we've seen our Savior condemned. We see Simon compelled, and now we see a sinner converted. Okay? Now, the providence of God, it was no accident that Simon and his family were passing through Jerusalem at this precise moment. In fact, I believe that it was the providence of God that allowed them to plan to where Jesus was that he could carry the cross. I can't understand all the workings of our Lord, and God knows I can't. And I don't believe nobody can say I understand all the workings of the Lord. We don't understand everything about him, but I do know that he has a way of bringing people to him that need to be saved. Yes. Remember a woman that was at the well in John 4, 4 through 29, that Remember the Ethiopian eunuch, my friend, in Acts 8, 26 through 39. Uh, apparently this morning, uh, God used this event uh, to give us, my friend, uh, a clear picture of what it means uh, to bring about salvation uh, in the life of one. Oh, <laughs> 
It says too heavy for I can't take no more. See, some folk, that's, that, that's why they may get a gun or whatever and put it up there. Can't take no more. I've had enough of them. I've had enough of him. I've had enough of her. I've had enough of the children. I just had enough, enough, enough. But must Jesus bear the cross alone? God, our Father, how we thank you. Oh, God, thank you. Thank you for Thomas Shepherd who wrote that song. And thank you for Simon the Serenian who bore yours. Lord, we knew, we know, and we have to look back and know you was mighty, mighty weak. But God, you fixed it for this black brother to come along and say, I'm ready to crawl. Oh, God. And he bore it for our sake. May we today make up in our minds that we're going to bear ours for you too, Lord. We thank you for all you've done, all you're doing, all you're going to do. That the lost will be saved today. In Jesus' name, amen. We offer Christ to you. We offer Christ to you.
till he come again. Wherefore, if any of us eat of this bread and drink of this cup, unworthily we eat and drink damnation to ourselves, not discerning the lost body for this cause. Many are sick, many are weak, and many are sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we're chasing of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Our preacher will pray the prayer for the bread and the fruit of vine, and we will proceed with the partaking of the Thy precious and eternal Father, we come once again to say thank you. Father God, we ask that you would look up on this table that's been prepared for this occasion. Lord, we ask that you would bless the bread, bless the wine, dear God, that we may commemorate what you did back on Calvary. Bless it all, one and the same. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. On that night, after the Passover meal, Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, and he took the bread, and when he broke it, he said, take heed we would do likewise. After the same man also he took the cup when he sub saying and drank he all of it as often as we eat and drank we show his suffering there till he come again. They all began to drink. I love thank you Lord. Tastes real good the other day Lord. Thank you for a good taste. Amen. See, y'all told me to try this here. More than one time. Drink it plenty of this. It's going to help you out. Amen. Amen. Let's keep Sister Doris Jackson in our prayers. She had surgery uh, this past Thursday. Let's keep her in prayer. And we look forward to each of you joining us on Wednesday. Lord, be with you. On that night after supper, they sang a hymn and they departed. Brother Tony, give us something to march out on. God bless you. God.